Kay and I have been collaborating on this project, uh, Landscape Islands, which is about a bringing together of two very distinct disciplines, ceramics and sound art, and seeing what kind of dialogue there is between the two of them and how those two things can coexist in the same space. So the project very much started off with our own collaboration um, in the Shetland Isles, a month-long residency at Scalloway Booth. Which we got a couple of years before we actually went there. So we had plenty of time to plan what we were doing and organise having an exhibition at Shetland Museum and Archives. We knew that we were going to make this exhibition but we didn't really know exactly what we were going to do until we got there. And I think that's one of the best things about doing a residency is that it's a time for investigation and exploration and in particular in this instance to just immerse ourselves in the landscape and allow the landscape to shape what we made. Every day we went for walks across the Shetland landscape collecting various things. I was collecting tiny plants and flowers that I found growing underfoot and Joseph was collecting sounds. We mapped out a series of routes with the local wildlife trust to try and sort of maximise the potential for collecting really interesting sounds and plants. And in order to turn these tiny little things into something which is visible, I used a digital microscope and I was concentrating on the sounds of the environment, just the ordinary everyday sound, but a very quiet soundscape in Shetland. So a lot of these things go unheard as well. They just become part of the background noise. The title of the work, uh, Inner Shetland Landscape, uh, refers to John Cage's famous piano piece from 1948, Inner Landscape. And it's really about exploring the idea of what it is like to be part of the landscape rather than observing it from the outside. I very much wanted to get away, if you like, from the tradition of landscape painting, which traditionally would put a landscape in a frame and then you stand at a distance and observe it. By using the magnification process, I made them much more visible and almost like an immersive experience of Shetland that overwhelms the senses by drawing attention to these tiny things that you would normally not even see and injecting a huge amount of colour and texture into them. And that and the combination of sounds and being immersed in a four-channel soundscape so that the sounds appear to be all around you as you're sitting in the space was how we tried to achieve this feeling of being part of the landscape. The Ceramic House is my home and it's also a gallery where I do pop-up exhibitions. I curate exhibitions of contemporary ceramics there once a year. And 2016 was the sixth year in a row, during May when the Brighton Festival is on. It's an unusual house in that I have covered a lot of the surfaces inside and out with tiled installations. So you could say it's a showcase of my architectural ceramics practice. Each year I curate themed exhibitions at the Ceramic House, so it was a logical choice to link it to the Shetland project. All the artists live on islands, and that does include Great Britain, <laughs> uh, which I am one. I found artists from Iceland, Ireland, the Isle of Skye, Shetland, Orkney, Sardinia, Bonholm, and of course the island of Great Britain. Some of the artist's work in the exhibition is more directly representative of the landscape and others are more concerned with elements such as geology, archaeology or the political landscape. It can be quite challenging sometimes to show work, particularly if it's an installation piece, 
against the chaos and colour of the house. We decided to convert the garage into a gallery so that we could have a neutral space to show work in. We were keen to kind of make this uh, new gallery space something where this uh, ceramic and sound collaborations could continue. And we will also be hosting some um, sound and improvised music performances in the gallery space and also in the house itself. We invited sound artists to come and perform in the space in, surrounded by the ceramics. And again, all of those artists, in some way, their work responds, even if it's quite obliquely, to some kind of notion of landscape. I introduced the project to our audience and also performed with my sonic baton, which was actually made for me by one of the residency artists called Mike Blow. It is very simply a conductor's baton, which has been adapted with an accelerometer, which is the kind of technology you have in a mobile phone. And from that, I'm then able to map that movement onto sounds which are then stored in the computer. So then in performance, it gets me out from behind the laptop and I think that by introducing a visual element that focuses people's attention to a deeper listening experience. We decided to continue the collaboration of ceramics and sound by inviting two pairs of artists to collaborate together. It was a logical step to start offering residencies because we've got accommodation that we offer at the ceramic house and now both Joseph and I have got studios at Phoenix so we actually have all the resources we need to invite other artists to come and work here and live here. It's been a absolutely brand new experience for everybody involved. Uh, none of the ceramic artists have worked with sound artists before and vice versa. We invited the ceramic artists to come and live at the ceramic house for five weeks and use that time to make a new body of work. The sound artists have been visiting and responding to the process that has in some ways been led by the ceramic artists. Part of that is a, is a practical consideration because ceramics is a very time intensive process. The landscape islands theme for me became what is the meaning of nature? Not just looking at nature, but what is it for people? And then I started looking back on old uh, pagan religions. We threw around a few ideas and then the idea that kind of came out and stuck was this idea of making something from Celtic mythology and somehow trying to animate that with sounds. And uh, so one of their gods was Pan and he was the god of the instinctual animal nature in human. It kind of is this intuitive process of being working with the essence of something and while I'm in the clay sculpting it becomes more and more clear what it is about. We're both quite keen that the sounds are not just a, um, an illustration of the sculpture, but they kind of add some kind of new thoughts to it or something like that. And so what I'm doing at the moment is gathering sounds, and then we're going to try those out when I come back. Mike has been really good at, at really getting my thoughts and adding sound to the 
universe I'm trying to make around the work it just brings in so many different layers of meaning. Yeah, that's what we're hoping, is that the, the final piece is kind of more than the sum of the parts. I just started to think about islands and the isolation that makes an island is the isolation that the sea makes. And of course then it draws you to the beach and the coastline. So once I started to hook up with Ingeborg and got to know her inspirations, I sort of started to develop ideas from there. She, she talked about sort of the beach as um, you have the depth, the land and the sky, so it's very sort of three-dimensional. So I thought about using a surround sound and different speaker elevation as well. I have been building up this sculptures in reaction to the stones on the beach in Iceland. Ingeborg had said that she was interested to sort of play, sort of make sounds with it, with the sculptures. So I thought that was a really nice idea. So that's that's how we decided to create the sounds. So I brought a violin bow and we bowed the sculptures. We used some of the stones from the beach mm -hmm. to play around with inside, create sounds with that and just mm -hmm. the sculptures on top of each other. And then we brought the stones into the piece, like the sound of real stones to my ceramic stones. And, mm -hmm. and that gave, gave an opportunity to bring actual stones into the installation. When we were bowing, the sculpture it leaves sort of a white trace yeah. because of the resin that you put on the bow. And Ingebjörg really liked the white outline that that made and it sort of re reminded me of sort of salt deposits that you get on stone. Yeah, like the trace of the yeah. sculpture. So I really like that, that, yeah, the sound leaving a trace on the sculptures and the sculptures leaving a trace in the sound. instead of amidst the vineyards and the olive gardens. We know what happened to those who chanced to meet the great god Pan. Here, on its time-defaced pedestal, the image of a half-forgotten god crumbles to its complete oblivion. I've really enjoyed having the artists around all the time, that we can just continue the conversation at any time about what's happening and what we're all making and what the end result might be. You, you really appreciate to have the conversation about what you're doing at the time, not just your, uh, your work that you already made or something, but what you're doing now. It opens up uh, a lot of possibilities and it makes you think of things you wouldn't have thought about other way because those possibilities just weren't there when it was just you making your object. It shifts the sort of responsibility as well, it sort of becomes a joint project and it's not so heavy dependent on doing everything yourself. There's a very good kind of creative atmosphere 
about this place and about actually Joe and Kay's work together, I think it's, it's, um, it's quite unusual that they're working together as a sound artist and a ceramicist. The things that you learn from just being in an environment with peers, because a lot of us artists spend a lot of solo time in the studio. And you're right, it, it's interesting this thing about uh, working with people that you respect and people who you can learn from, that we could all get down to a very detailed conversation about practice immediately. Yeah. And it couldn't happen in any other context. And then outside, you know, like, what the big happy family? <laughs>